I'm Eric. Hi. And I'm Daryl. Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the cameras we used to use to shoot our videos in the 80s. But first, let's answer a quick question that we get a lot in the comments. This is excellent video quality for the times. What were they shooting this with? We've gotten a lot of different comments. They word it different ways, but some people think our videos are faked because they're like, dude, this is like 1080p quality. They must have had like professional video cameras. And no. So the reason the video was so high quality is because of these. We shot it on video eight on these eight millimeter tapes. The quality was uh, comparable to beta, which was a popular high-end format used in a lot of professional equipment. So the video would start to suffer once we transfer the video from these eight millimeter tapes over to VHS. At that point, they start looking crap. So the videos that you see on our channel are directly captured from these eight millimeter tapes. We have piles of these eight millimeter tapes and they don't last forever because it's magnetic tape and uh, they will erode. We've captured all of these tapes and, uh, and now they're just, they're safe in digital form. For you to watch. So now let's talk about the actual cameras that we used. It all started in 1984 behind a Kmart. The store was closing down and the trash was piling up. Eric's dad heard about this closing and decided to rummage through this junk in hopes to find some artifacts. Among the debris were some surveillance cameras, deemed unsalvageable and therefore were discarded. That's the moment we obtained the legendary Black and White Surveillance Camera! And this thing was awesome. We loved it. So in the very beginning, very <laughs> beginning, we had a black and white surveillance camera. It was a really trashy thing, but uh, but we made it work. And, we loved it. But it wasn't entirely working. So me and my dad, my dad being an electrical engineer, we built a power supply for it. More like he built it and I watched, but you know. <laughs> so once he had it powered up, we could see that it actually works, right? Because it did come out of the garbage, so. But it didn't have a lens on it, so everything was blurry. He removed one of the lenses that he had on an SLR camera, and he stuck it on there. It was a zoom lens too, and it had focus, and you could uh, open and close the iris as well. So we could do like fade outs and stuff, which was nice. So we um, ended up just hooking it straight into a VHS player, like my parents' VCR and then um, hit record and that was it. Later, we were like, hey, we can like have sound too. So we went to um, Radio Shack. Radio Shack. Yeah. Radio Shack and picked up this like. Forget that microphone, the black microphone with the, the red. Yeah, the red uh, windscreen on it. Windscreen on it. It was like a Mr. Microphone, but it wasn't Mr. Microphone. It was just like a generic, like, I don't know, microphone. So we plugged it into the, uh, into the VCR so we couldn't be very far away from the VCR because we had this cord. As long as the cord would go. So we could record video and audio at the same time and then output it all of that to the family TV, the big screen TV in the living room. That was our viewfinder. And, and we got the Pizza Man in. We're the critically acclaimed, uh, famous Eric. Let's have a word with him. Okay, that's nice. Um, well, let's have a second. Huh. We don't have to wait for the pizza, man, because we're already eating pizza. You want some? You do? Wasn't it? Didn't that taste good? I mean, you know it tasted good, no? Well, anyway, see, this is pepperoni with a little bit of hamburger, you know, ground beef, you know, pan, pan, uh... <laughs> okay. So essentially, we built a camcorder at the time, so you could see what you're filming, you could film it, <laughs> and you had audio as well. It's a gigantic camcorder. Right. <laughs> so it's like, still like a camcorder, but right. just a big, ugly one with wires everywhere. <laughs> but this also means that you can't leave the living room. So everything we filmed for the first at least six to nine months was like in our living room because you couldn't go outside. It was just that you're stuck there. We took my parents' garage we begged and pleaded my parents to move their cars out so we could use that as like a, a soundstage, basically, like a studio. And we moved all of this stuff with big TV, VCR, and we filmed in the garage. The audio really sucked. Now we're gonna have our special guest. You 
Bobby Reed for Harrison Ford. Yeah, and this is Harrison Ford. Yeah, okay. Hello, Harrison. Nice to meet you. Now, this camera being a surveillance camera was black and white, um, but it also had another unique character to it was that there was a what we called the lightning bolt this giant streak um, in the image in the top right corner and it was due to um, I believe the camera set outside under a street light and that constant light hitting the sensor just burned itself into the sensor um, so we just I don't know, we just kind of lived with it. We just kind of thought of it as a, a part of the image that we made. You know, I always thought it was indoors because it looks like it looks like one of those fluorescent bulbs, like a long tube, you know what I mean? Hanging from uh, a ceiling. It could have been, I don't know. You decide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. I'm Jimmy Buffett. We really wanted portability. We wanted to get out and move around. Uh, so then we rented a camera. The movie rental place near me also rented VHS cameras. And uh, so we talked my dad into renting uh, a VHS camera, which is like one of those big shoulder mount things like everyone thought that we were shooting on all the time. And I guess that was the first video we ever did at my house. Hello, darling. We're recording. We got it. Yeah. As you can see, the video quality is not great. I mean, this is kind of your typical 80s look, I guess. This is us sitting around being amazed that we can hold a TV, a VCR, a microphone, <laughs> a camera. We can hold all of it in one piece and we can walk outside with it. We were just blown away by this, this crazy technology. We're looking in the mirror. This is me. And I'm doing the cameraman thing. And in fact, that weekend we had rented a Nintendo game. We rented Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> at the same time as we rented this VHS camera. Ninja Gaiden. Wait, let me get a close up. Get it? Yeah. Ninja Gaiden. We, we just now rented it. <laughs> Where we rented this. Beautiful. <laughs> and that was a really awesome weekend. I still remember that weekend. It was great. Yeah. So after getting a taste for a portable camera that was color and didn't have the lightning bolt in it, we <laughs> got new cameras. Sony Handycam! Da, 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 da. We got our first camcorder. Yeah. We got the new Sony Handycam CCD F70. And this thing basically changed our lives. You got, you got one first. Yeah, in '88, I believe. And I, th I think the, like, you got it like right before summer. Because I took it. You to went on Florida. vacation to Florida. Yeah. And you had it, and then like it, it was after that that I convinced my parents to buy me the exact same camera. Right. It was so compact. It was really very modern for its time. I mean, it was only about this big and you could, and it didn't weigh very much. So it didn't fatigue you carrying it around. And I mean, it was just, it was perfect for our needs. It begged my parents, finally got one. And like, it was just like, oh, I think I promised to record all of our vacations and edit them and everything. I was like, I will do anything, I will do anything. <laughs> but I think, I think they saw that, oh, this is maybe like a learning experience. Maybe this is something he would like to pursue in life. Uh, well, like, they were correct. <laughs> so That's how my dad justified it as well, for like all the computers and stuff. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the viewfinder was black and white. You remember that? Yeah. And you're looking through this tiny thing with black and white. Yeah, long before flip out screens or anything like that. We bought the same exact bag, the same camera bag. Same kit, essentially. Same camera, same bag and same like extra batteries. You can see a shot of both of our camera bags in an old movie that we did called The Burglar. Yeah. It was like props in a movie because we needed two identical bags so we just use our camera bags. Right, yeah. See, here's this camera. It's 
just like mine. Just, I mean, exactly. There's no difference. Come here. I want you to watch this. The beauty of owning two matching cameras is that the footage cuts together so well. The colors are exactly processed the same. Uh, the resolution that just, you know, the characteristics of the image are identical. So we would always go swapping back and forth between whose camera is, is filming what. And I guess once we had two cameras, we got really into the idea of being able to live switch between them. So we started investigating a lot of different equipment that could help us facilitate that. Welcome to our show. We don't have a name for it. Uh, we just decided to do this. Here's our guest. Uh, I don't really know what he does. Actually, I don't know why he's in on, on this show. The thing you're doing is talking while the camera's switching back and forth to this guy. Well, anyways, here he has something to say. So it wasn't until a couple years later that we started to amass some professional gear that we could use to switch the cameras and do a, some crazy effects and, and editing and stuff like that. But we're gonna get into exactly how we used to edit our, our movies uh, in a future video. So that Sony Handycam had a really cool feature that we loved to death. It was the superimpose effect. Scotty, beam me up. <laughs> so that was a perfect example of what? Uh, so that's the superimposed feature on the Sony Handycam. Yeah. Which we use so much. Uh, we that could, was like the original special effect. Yeah, because you didn't need a computer or anything. You could do that anywhere. I don't think we'd ever even heard of such a thing. I mean, we just kind of lucked out getting cameras that had such a feature. So this was a consumer level camera that we had, but it seemed like we're total pros with this ability to superimpose graphics and titles and stuff like that, just with the camera, no computers or anything like that. What it was, was a way that you could superimpose a, a high contrast image onto your, your video. It was essentially a luminance keyer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we had no idea at the time. <laughs> I think we just called it superimpose for the longest time. We had no idea. <laughs> One more time. So what we love doing is drawing stuff, on, you know, with a black sharpie on a white piece of paper. Just draw something, anything, and then capture that in the camera, and then you could superimpose that anywhere you wanted to. And we had so much fun with that. Shirt. It never really stuck around on any future camera models either. It was just mm -mm. kind of came and went. I guess maybe they figured nobody used it, but they had no idea how much we used that. <laughs> if they only knew! <laughs> we held on to our Sony Handycams until at least the, at least the year 2000, right? When, when did you get a new camera? I got a Hi8 camera in the late 90s and and it was like it was a little way little compact thing i kept using the eight millimeter until probably like the year 2002 maybe or so and then i got my first dv camera it records on these tiny tapes so this is the eight millimeter and this is the mini dv tapes just kept getting smaller but it's digital video stored on a magnetic tape of course the quality is way better but that was in the 2000s so we really got a lot of use out of these sony's yeah in fact i i thought i still had mine but maybe i got rid of it a couple of years ago um, but i know it had made it to this house so. oh wow man if we still had it I know. So that's about it. Thanks for watching this video of a walk down memory lane of our old video cameras that we use in our childhood. Good times. And stay tuned for a video about how we used to edit our videos as well. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs>